Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com. Welcome to this week's supply and demand, Forex, gold and S&P fundamental or technical analysis for the week ahead starting the 12th of August. Uh, it's been a topsy-turvy week for sure and we'll get into that uh, straight away as well as uh, some trade updates later on in the video. But before we get into it, please don't forget to like, subscribe and share the video content across your social media platforms to support the uh, the channel if you find my uh, content useful every week. So, uh, looking at the uh, the dollar index, uh, equally weighted dollar index first and um, technically um, the dollar index um, has kind of pulled back um, uh, for reasons really um, fundamentally over the past uh, week uh, that were really kind of based on expectations of uh, uh, further and deeper cuts um, uh, for the US. So there was some um, uh, non-farm payrolls pretty much came out last week uh, lower than forecast and unemployment came out higher than forecast but also at the same time we did have some risk off sentiment and we had uh, you know uh, the question was what caused the global market meltdown right um, and uh, the meltdown according to um, some of the uh, experts the meltdown which has erased trillions of dollars from global equities is deeply rooted in fears of a deeper US economic slowdown and a historic shift in Japan's interest rate and violent rotation away from heavyweight tech stocks due to their higher or high valuations. So the flight to safety has intensified after the weak US economic data spurred concerns that the the Federal Reserve may have uh, been behind the curve in cutting rates and will now likely uh, need to ease monetary policy aggressively to head off a recession and also geopolitical tensions in the Middle East have further added to the cautious sentiment as Israel braced for a possible attack from Iran and regional militias in retaliation for assassinations of Hezbollah and Hamas officials. So, um, over the past uh, week, what we've got is, and this is the FedWatch tool, CME FedWatch tool. If you scroll up, uh, this is basically, you can find this if you do a Google search. Um, uh, the market pretty much priced, was priced in further uh, uh, cuts. So we definitely got 100% chance of an ease. But what we also have is um, um, the fact that we've got uh, a month ago, we it was only really about a 6% chance of a 50 basis point cut right so currently this is uh where we are now this is a 25 basis point cut and this is a 50 basis point cut and so uh, about a week ago um uh, well a month ago it was about 7.6 percent chance of a uh, 50 basis point cut 0.5 percent uh, uh, uh cut and then a week ago after the non-farm and uh, weak really economic data and jobs data we got an increase massive increase in a 50 basis point cut so the market kind of priced uh that in when we go and look at the uh when we look at the dollar right that's where we got the uh, bit of a sell-off uh to the downside uh, and my bias really is to continue to look for uh, shorts on the uh, the dollar for now. I think any pullbacks up into uh, any kind of supply zone as confluence, because this is really only really, really looking at the dollar index for confluence. So you're looking for at least some sort of a move back to the upside to look for uh, shorts on a pullback. Um, one of the currencies uh, that was really the center of attention was the Japanese uh, yen. So the Japanese yen, um, you know, uh, they uh, the Bank of Japan ended up uh, hiking uh, interest rates. And so um, what that also did was um, uh, it had an effect on what's known as the carry trade. And the carry trade is where... Uh, the yen was being used as a funding currency because it because of its low interest rate, and then uh, traders were basically uh, investing in a higher yielding or higher yielding assets, and so and po pocketing the difference between uh, the lower yielding currency and a higher yielding asset. And uh, once the Bank of Japan not only hiked rates but became a lot more hawkish because that was really the key.
key because they hiked rates earlier this year. I think it was around March and there wasn't the same um, type of reaction. But I think this time it was more to do with um, the fact that they were definitely hawkish. And the unwinding of the uh, yen funded carry trades uh, um, was was really a, a massive issue. But it also has further to run and the Japanese currency may strengthen towards 100 uh, per dollar over time according to BNY so investors are still too bearish on the yen and short positions will continue to be slashed says Bob Savage the firm's head of market strategy and insights and uh, an analysis uh, analysis shows the yen uh, is too cheap at its current level of, of uh, 147 and its fair value over time should be more towards the 100 he wrote in a note expect the pain for yen shorts to remain in play for the weeks if not months ahead savage wrote uh, further risk reductions are going to follow and August will uh, continue to be a highly volatile month. So um, when we look at, you know, uh, the dollar yen, uh, what he's saying is that really, let me actually look at maybe the uh, over the five year probably, um, the he's saying that basically prices should be somewhere down here, down at the hundreds, right? He said it should be here. So um I can see why that makes sense. Now you've got the um, the market pricing in uh, more cuts for the Federal Reserve. And at the same time, now we've got um, the Bank of Japan looking to <clears throat> hike rates and be on their hiking cycle. It makes sense for prices to move uh, to the downside. I don't know whether it's going to move all the way down to the downside or that far, um, but if you're looking for any kind of uh, sell trades, then ultimately what you're looking for is a pullback into either some sort of level where you've got supply <clears throat> or if prices make lower lows, right? So you're looking at either supply zone. Uh, don't know whether we'll get all the way back up to this 154 level. Uh, I highly doubt it, but of course anything's possible in the markets. Um, but ultimately the direction of travel should be to the downside. So let's say, for example, we get uh, a move to the downside here and then we get um, probably, you know, a pullback up into this area here and then a short trade there. That's probably what we're looking at if that can happen. So uh, path of least resistance should be more to the short side rather than the long side. Uh, looking at the um, dollar Swiss and the dollar Swiss, uh, for me, it's not really a pair that I'm looking at trading at the moment. Don't really like the Swiss franc in terms of its fundamentals. It's quite expensive as well. But um, out of the two, um, it's a bit more of a harder read. So I guess if you're looking to buy the dollar for whatever reason, um, you can uh, look for uh, pullbacks like this a bit of a pullback into you know some sort of demand if you're looking for a um a sell uh meaning that you're looking to buy the swiss franc then you can look for basically prices to move up into uh that zone there or what you'd have to look for is for prices to move to the downside first again then a pullback up into a supply zone before going short again uh, looking at the dollar CAD and the dollar CAD, again, um, not really a pair that I'm interested in uh, now. I think it's definitely run its course in terms of, you know, dollar upside. Um, both currencies, both central banks looking to cut quite aggressively in the market is pricing that in. So if you are a buyer of the dollar, US dollar, then uh, against the Canadian dollar, then you're looking for a pullback into some sort of demand zone. If you're looking at the... Um, to buy the CAD, uh, then you're looking at probably the highs around the 139s, 13850s to look for some sort of uh, uh, sell trade. But um, again, not really a pair that I'm interested in um, in trading. Uh, the British pound uh, dollar is something that I am interested in trading, looking to get long. Uh, again, this is more based off of interest rate differentials. Now, the Bank of England are looking uh, to potentially uh, Cut rates, yes, but they're looking to cut rates a bit less. Now, we do have uh, some um, some data uh, coming out 
this week. Um, but uh, for me, depending on what happens uh, this week and this week's data, you're looking at uh, basically a pullback, why I'm anyway, into one of these zones, if we can get something like that, or at least a move to the downside where the data is supportive of going um, of going long, then uh, for me, that is a really nice buy. Also as well, when we go and look at the, um, the UK data, it says here, the fundamentals, it says here, pound sterling has fallen heavily against all major counterparts over the recent week, but traders should buy into the resulting dip against the euro and safe haven Swiss franc, according to Barclays strategists. So once modest long positions, uh, uh, positioning clears and volatility drops, however, we are left with a better levels to engage in pound longs, particularly versus the euro and the Swiss franc. Barclays strategists said, in a recent research briefing demand resilience what looks to be a slow cutting cycle by the monetary policy committee and prospects for supply side improvement via a closer eu uk relationship continues to dictate a constructive view they added so um for me uh, the pound does look like a decent buy um, so I'm looking for pretty much pullbacks into a decent demand zone before looking at going uh, long. We've got the British pound, uh, Japanese yen. Again, not really a pair that I'm interested in. I think the pound um, would be weaker against the yen overall um, because of the obviously the difference between uh, they're on different ends of the cycle. The Bank of England are cutting rates. The yen, the Bank of Japan are. Um, uh, hiking rates so you would think the path of least resistance should still continue to be to the downside but I don't see really any um, uh, uh, major setups yet to get short but if I'm looking for short trades on um, and buying the yen I don't think the pound would be the one that I would really be buying it against probably look for a weaker currency like the um, like the Swiss franc for example would be something I would look to um, I would look to buy the yen against euro dollar. So the euro dollar, um, uh, you know, we shot up pretty much last week after non-farm payrolls. And um, I do think that the euro dollar at the moment, in the short term at least, is definitely a buy as long as the data is supporting the narrative. Uh, when we look at the uh, the euro, uh, the eurozone. Uh, fundamentals it says here the euro has climbed to the strongest level in seven months as signs of the u.s economy is much weaker than previously thought bolstered bets on the federal reserve rate uh interest rate cuts reducing the attractiveness of the dollar and it says here while the european central bank has already started easing policy with a quarter point rate cut in june traders are betting it may end up lowering borrowing costs less aggressively than the fed this year so swaps imply about uh, 125 basis points of rate reductions in the us this year compared with an additional 80 basis points from the euro area counterpart so there are more cuts uh, the market is pricing in more cuts for the uh, federal reserve than it is for the ecb therefore you're seeing prices move to the upside right so i think any pullbacks down into uh, you know some sort of demand zone uh, I think is going to be nice either you're going to get something like this and move down into that demand zone there or you have to look for price to uh, make probably some sort of higher high right something like that then a pullback into a demand zone right something like that and then a, a move to the upside so euro dollar still for me um i say still but um i would say more of a buy than a sell uh euro yen pretty much the yen is a buy across the board um and against the euro it still still should continue to be a um uh, a buy so meaning that you want to get short on this currency pair but just like pretty much everything else you're looking for really kind of pullbacks or for price to prove that uh obviously you want to get short and then a pullback into a supply zone so not really much uh, at the moment to look towards in terms of uh, daily supply and demand zones i think you have to let price action develop uh euro pound the euro pound um i think 
the euro pound although uh, you know Barclays are bullish on the uh, the pound uh, against the euro and if you're taking that view then really you should be looking for at least some sort of move back up if you've missed this move here at least a move back up into this zone before looking at going uh, short but it's not really a pair that I'm looking to trade um, at the moment I think there are better if I'm buying the pound there are definitely better um, uh, trades to take uh, and uh, one of them would be for example the uh, Swiss francs so that is definitely something I'm looking to uh, get into but if you are looking to uh, go short on this currency pair then looking at the uh, looking at a bit more of a pullback to look for shorts would be decent uh, the Australian dollar US dollar now I think this is more of a buy um, the Australian dollar um, the RBA uh, were quite hawkish this week and um, also as well they're one of the last central banks to cut rates and so um, you know when you've got a central bank that's holding for longer then really the path of least resistance should still be to the upside the the only problem with the Australian dollar is that it is susceptible to uh, risk off sentiment but um, fundamentally really you should be looking for uh, buy trades um, and on on pullbacks so that's really where um, my view is and where I think uh, prices will go over the medium to uh, to long term and looking at gold uh, gold uh, again should really be more of a buy on pullbacks uh, with the Federal Reserve looking to cut rates um, gold should be uh, definitely the, the the buy the concerns of obviously uh, economic growth in the US should be again more of a buy so any pullbacks into some sort of demand zone should be a nice uh, buy that's really the only direction that I'd be looking to trade this and then we have the S&P and so again we did get a sell-off we did get a sell-off on the uh, S&P, which if you look at previous videos of mine, previous weeks, uh, we've been saying that the uh, banks and the institutions have actually been looking at a 10% discount. And guess what happened? Prices came down to that 10%, right? Right there. You can see it here, 10%, 10.29%. Um, so it did come down into that 10% bounced. So if you are looking at, you know, buying the S&P, then I think this is actually a really nice area to start to establish uh, some long trades on a pullback. If you are looking at sell trades and shorts, then you should be looking at, I think the first area to look for some short trades uh, should be somewhere around here. So yeah. Around there should be a decent area to look for some short trades. Um, so let's get as well into the uh, the week ahead. And actually, I forgot to do this at the beginning of the video, but um, let's get into the week ahead before we get into some trade updates. So uh, week ahead on the 12th of August, the focus in the United States will be on the CPI and PPI reports. So inflation is going to be important in speeches by Federal Reserve officials. Additionally, key Data releases will include um, retail sales, Michigan, consumer confidence, export and import prices, uh, housing starts, building permits and industrial production in the United Kingdom. <clears throat> it will be a busy week with the release of data on unemployment, inflation, GDP growth rates, industrial production and retail sales. So a lot going on in the UK. Meanwhile, Q2 GDP growth rates will be announced for Japan. Interest rate decisions are expected from New Zealand and that's going to be important for any New Zealand trades if you're looking to go long or short. In Australia, the NAB Business Confidence and Westpac Consumer Confidence will be released and Germany will release its ZEW sentiment index. So lots going on uh, this week. And uh, finally, looking at some uh, trade updates over the past uh, couple of weeks. So starting off on the Euro New Zealand. So in my last video, I was talking about um, going short here, or I went short here and ended up um, making um, a decent amount. So going down into that lower time frames. <clears throat> I managed to get involved in all uh, three positions um, and uh, took some profit 
uh, took all my profit pretty much down at around these lows. So uh, three trades entered, managed to get out uh, around here. When non-farm payrolls came out uh, last week and it was actually bearish on the dollar, I figured that the euro would end up um, strengthening, which is hence the reason why I ended up getting out of, uh, the, uh, in fact, all of my trades um, in and around this 1.82 area. Uh, looking at the Aussie uh, Swiss franc, an update on that. This was a full loss. I ended up getting involved in and around this area here. And then risk off sentiment on that Friday ended up kicking in. So um, ended up getting in, triggered into three trades, but lost all three. So that was a full stop out. And then um, I got into the Euro Swiss. Um, oh, also as well, I did, um, and this was a uh, part of, uh, uh, did explain in the uh, in the group um, in the Discord group uh, that I run um, that I would be entering into really a smaller position on this. So although I lost three positions, um, it was really kind of half positions. Whereas compared to the Euro New Zealand, I entered into full positions. So although um, I lost uh, three trades on here, um, I was still up for uh, the week and also as well the Euro Swiss franc now. Again, I was going long on the uh, Euro Swiss before, again, the um, the risk off sentiment kicked in, uh, got involved in and around this area here, managed to actually uh, make profit on one position, on the lower position when we entered 0.3%. Uh, and then um, the other two positions ended up um, losing. So uh, managed to bank 0.3%, uh, but then lost 0.3% on those two positions. So this trade ended up being a break-even position. So uh, last week was uh, uh, a winning uh, a week where uh, the... Uh, the Euro New Zealand kind of covered for the losses and the break even. Now, uh, I have entered into two new trades, one of them being the British pound uh, Canadian dollar. Uh, here is my entry. I'm only in one position at the moment. Um, managed to get involved here. Prices haven't pulled back to trigger me into the uh, two positions, uh, two extra positions down here, the 50% pull back in a 95% pullback so I'm only in one uh, position at the moment and um, the uh, really the fundamental reason behind it is that the uh, the pound are looking to uh, cut less than the Canadian dollar I think the Canadian dollar is one of the weaker currencies and they're expected to also cut uh, quite aggressively this year so I do expect really overall the um the uh, the British pound to strengthen against the Canadian dollar at some point, hopefully sooner rather than later. And also as well, silver. Um, I am in on a silver euro trade. So um, silver, I think, should be really the buy. Precious metals are the buy. Um, although the euro isn't necessarily the weakest currency out there, I do think that the um, that silver, uh, when we think about geopolitical risks, um, again, the ECB is still cutting rates. I do think that the path of these resistance should be to the upside. So we've got really a nice buy opportunity in and around here. And again, um, prices haven't pulled back to trigger me into the 50% uh, or 95% uh, buy limit order. So um, I'm only in one position at the moment. So let's see what happens there so um that's it for this week guys uh hope you enjoyed the analysis i hope you have a great trading week and all the best take care